church family. I'm Rex. And I'm Cheryl. And, and we're, we're the, the Johnsons. Johnsons. And here's what's happening this week on Church Street. Students, open gym night is tomorrow night. This is a great opportunity to invite your friends to come and be a part of our student ministry. Church can be intimidating or sound boring. This is a great way to show students that we are welcoming, fun, and full of joy in Christ. We will eat pizza, play wiffle ball, nine square and more so be intentional by inviting people to join you tomorrow night from 6 to 8 p.m for open gym you gonna come over here with me you gonna stand over there on that side do i have a choice yes <laughs> you can sit in the truck <laughs> spring is here and easter is right around the corner we invite you to join us for our easter celebration on sunday march the 31st at 10 a.m Church family, what a wonderful opportunity we have before us as we approach the Easter season. People are looking for hope and they are more receptive during Easter and Christmas time. We challenge you to begin praying and inviting people to our Easter service. Speaking of Easter, we have some exciting events for the kids. K through sixth grade will have an Easter scavenger hunt and glow in the dark egg hunt on Saturday, March 30th at Dale Johnson's home at 7 p.m. Also, there will be a preschool Easter egg hunt at Seth Nugent's house on Saturday, the 30th at 10 a.m. 
For more details, please see Donna Johnson or Anna Nugent. Easter is a beautiful time to worship the Lord for what He has done. Christ continues to change lives here at Sardis Baptist Church. We're so excited for our upcoming baptism next Sunday. If you or anyone you know is interested in baptism, please contact Brother Mike this week. <laughs> Come over here. You keep scooting over there. Are you afraid of me? Yes. <laughs> Within arm's length, yes. <laughs> One final announcement, please make plans to join us on Sunday morning, April the 7th, for a time of worship with So Free. So Free is a traveling ensemble from the University of Mobile featuring our very own Michaela Holland. We look forward to worshiping the Lord together and we hope you will join us. So, to our entire church family, and to our guests, thank, thank you, you for, for joining, joining us today. today. That was my line. That was on both of our lines. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. As we look around, there are so many smiling faces, and that's what it's all about. A lot of folks are gathering together in this place for not only a time, but because we love one another but because we get to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We should be happy about that. It's a wonderful opportunity at this time of year to do that. Thank you for joining us today. Many of you might be visiting with us. I'm still learning names and faces, so bear with me. But would love for you to take the card out of the pocket there. Let us know that you visited with us and drop it in. Also, you can find more information about how to share your prayer requests in that avenue this morning. You can leave it in the uh, or meet me out back, out back. How, how about that? Out off in this lobby for us to get to know one another. We do have a, a special, wonderful flowers that's been placed in our services today in honor of uh, Chad Black, in memory of Chad Blackwell celebrating his 50th birthday in heaven by his parents, placed by his parents. And so we just want to continue remembering this precious family in our prayers, but. And also, like to share with you that Keith Cornelson's brother passed away. Uh, there will be a visitation tomorrow at Etowah Memorial Funeral Home from 11 to 1. So also keep them in prayer today. Let's join together in a word of prayer and then follow by the time of welcome this morning. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to call you Father. Lord, in this place, we've gathered together in, to worship your name. Let me, myself, and I not stand in the way of that. Let us be a part of this together. Lord, we celebrate who you are, and especially this time of year, to be able to share with so many folks about the love that we have in you. Lord, may that be a part of our heartbeat today as we worship together. Lord, we lift up these families in prayers, those who are remembering a loved one, but then also those who are recently grieving the Lord us. We are thankful for your hand of comfort that you've given to us in these times. And this, Lord, we especially thank you for your hand upon these families during this time of remembrance. In your name we pray. Amen.
creatures in need of a Savior, aren't we? If you would please stand this morning. Let's sing to the Lord. Through the sun sets free, we are free indeed. What's like a bird in prison I dwell
Ursule will ich singen. Ursule. God's people said. Amen. Sometimes the best sermons that's ever preached are coming from the individuals that understand how faithful God has been. Because whenever you look back, and you look back over our lives, some of us can look back longer than others, 
you'll realize there's not been a point that God has said, oh, they know what they're doing. Let's just let them go. Aren't we thankful that God doesn't let us go on our own sometimes? Sometimes we choose it, don't we? Thank you for the time of worship we've had this morning. Brother Mike is perfectly away with his granddaughter being baptized this morning. We celebrate that. We celebrate that. Anytime our families are touched and make those decisions, we want to be there. And I thank you for allowing to endure the second fiddle today. How about that? Because you see, it's an opportunity that we get to know one another a little bit more than we've already had. I think there's a lot of you that are a Facebook addicts. How many of you are on Facebook more than once a day? Confession time. Come on. Come on. I know your hands because several of you asked me this morning if I ran the race with my son. No. His mom and I was there whenever we saw him off. He ran his heart for some unknown reason for 510K yesterday. Bless him. But then also, we were there when he crossed the finish line. Have no idea what took place between the start and the finish, but we know he finished the race. Because he's even got a number to show for it. Now, that's just a number that identifies that he's a runner. And this is Charles Teague analogy this morning, so bear with me. That's if... Someone like me had this number on, and we collapsed on the side of the road. They know who I belong to. Because what? The runner knows who, they're, who they are. Those who find them, maybe not. The joy of it is, is we're all identified in some way or another. How many of you in this room this morning is kin to somebody that's not sitting with you. What? How many of you, raise your hands, how many of you are kin to somebody that's not sitting with you this morning? I see all the hands online going, yeah, I know people in there. They ought to be there. They should be there. I can't be there. Yes, we're all kin to some people. My wife is back here, and my son and daughter have no idea where they are. They're in church somewhere. I know exactly where they are. Parents always know where their parents, kids are, don't they? My mother is probably even watching this morning going, yeah, I know. You, you go ahead. This morning's message comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12. Sometimes the sweetest thing a preacher could ever hear is the rustling of pages. Even with these Bible apps, I understand they're going to even put in an installment of sounds. That way it sounds like you're turning a page. Preachers need that. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12 says this. And I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because he's counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Let's bow together and say our prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much that in this room you've encompassed so many people across the walks of life to be able to be a part of the ministry that you've called us to be in. Lord, we didn't stumble upon it. We didn't happenstance thought that was a big career for us. But today we'll realize that you are the one that enables us to be vessels. To share your love in a wonderful way to a world that needs to see it more today than ever before. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand for you in the crowds of confusion and discouragement that we provide the hope 
of knowing you as Lord and Savior of our lives. Lord, guide us into this time together like you've already done. Make, make each of us aware of where we are with you and how we can be better vessels for you today until you call us home. In your name we pray. Amen. Today as I was reflecting over how the Lord has kind of walked with me over to preparing this message. It started many weeks ago whenever Brother Mike was going to see that he was going to be out one of the Sundays for his granddaughter's baptism. And already you know that he's going to probably tap Brother Pearson or myself and I was praying for Brother Pearson and he was praying for me. And one of us knew that it would come a day that he would say, this is a Sunday, I'm going to be away. So even in our jovial spirit, we looked at one another, you got this, I got this, who's got this, you know. But I started looking at this passage and saying, understanding that God has included me, myself and I, into the ministry. Now what does that look like and how does that translate to 2024? Well, I come back to this passage of Scripture where it says, and I thank Christ Jesus first. You know, every road that we enter into, it's by God's hand that's kind of put us in place first. It's not by accident. It's not by occurrences or coincidence. It's all because he says, now watch this. Now that's an old southern phrase that many of us, uh, our friends would say, now watch this, you know something's not good going to happen from this. But when God says, now watch this, he says, I'm going to do something miraculous. Something amazing that would probably blow you every mankind's mind, but I have a purpose involved. I was telling some folks earlier, I wish God would go ahead and give us hindsight first. That way we can correct some things before we get there. Did I hear amen out there? Yeah, yeah, don't we all? But in which I come back to this passage and that says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. Now enabled me means that he's given us the tools and abilities to do what he's called us to do. Now, many of you probably already know, if you don't, you're about to. I'm not a great sports athlete. Um, I don't run races. Proverbs 28 says, don't run unless you've got somebody following you, chasing you. Some of you are going, it don't say that. It does say that. Proverbs 28, 1. Go set behind. But... I'm not a quarterback or a tight end or a swimmer or any of those athletic things. Now, I'll watch, but it kind of grieves my heart that I can't do some of the things they're doing. I would love to be the person that pole vaults. To get on that run and jump up and you go flying through the air and you might land, you might not. You just go on. But whenever I think about what God has done in each of our lives, He's given all of us the tools for the ministry. Well, Brother Charles, I'm not called into the ministry. Somebody saying that? Please say that. Somebody say that. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody is called by God to serve Him where He plants you. What? No, he's not looking at me the way he looks at preachers. Well, that may be true, but at the same time, God has a wonderful ability that's about to unfold because he's placed you where he needs you. Think about the person sitting by you. Are you think that they have been called by God to do whatever profession of, that they're in? I say yes, because I've seen the testimonies of people that have served. For example, this morning in this room, there's many Sunday school teachers. I'm going to pick you out because I'm the education minister. I'm going to do it every time, okay? Because I think you're a vital part of this church family. 
If you're a Sunday school teacher, would you mind standing this morning? Now, some of you are a lot bolder. Come on, come on. Y'all can stand. Y'all are Sunday school teachers. You want people in your class to do things you ask. Look around the room. What better place we can have such a wonderful opportunity to grow in God's spirit. Y'all can sit down. Y'all are sitting. They're going, well, I can sit down yet. Thank your Sunday school teacher because of the fact they have treasured this word of God that they have and from which they want to say, well, maybe somebody will catch something that I caught this week. Teachers, we all know something true, don't we? We get a lot more blessing out of preparing it than we often do teaching it, don't we? God usually hits us first. And I'm thankful for that. Over the years, there have been several godly people that God has put some things in my life preparing me for what He was wanting me to do later. You'll hear it oftentimes from me. And one of that is my great grand. My grandmother, who is great, Grandma Rice, lives in 96, South Carolina. Don't mean a world to you, but she meant a world to me. Her and her husband, Papa Rice, took out on an expedition one time where they loaded up a camper and they traveled the United States with his truck in this small camper. I mean, small camper. I mean, not... Not like some of you may have this big RVs kind of deal. It was one of these things that you laid down, you slept, you ate in the same small compartment. They would go to every national park, state park, whenever it got time to stop, and they used that as their ministry field from that campground. Now, my grandmother and grandfather were not evangelists by name or by profession. My grandmother worked at, get this, a checkout line, checkout lane at Piggly Wiggly. How can she do much by just checking out groceries? Whenever she passed away, there was a lot of people that served as baggers and produce people that said, we love Miss Rice. Because sooner or later, you're going to hear the story, do you know Jesus? And she's going to be one to tell you what she thought of Jesus. She invested in lives. A Sunday school teacher that took a rowdy group of boys and set us down and through which they came to understand that not all of us had a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can easily pick that out sometimes, can't you? Get a bunch of boys together, you'll find out who loves Jesus and who doesn't. Well, I had two great teachers that invested in me by the name of Danny Geary and George Ferkwin. George Ferkwin's already made it to heaven. Danny Gary is looking for the day, as we all do, to that coming along. Had a youth minister, youth director at the time that invested me in the mission aspect of doing missions. She says, don't you want to go to Haiti? I said, nope. She said, let me tell you about the story of what God is doing in Haiti. So in the 80s, I got for my senior trip, while all my friends were going on cruises and all that kind of stuff, which still baffles me. But anyway, I could go on a two-week trip to Haiti on missions. I've never been out of the state. I've never been out of the country. And those of you that's been in my shoes thinking about going on your first mission trip, it scares you to death, doesn't it? At the moment, I thought it was just good to be out of mom and dad's house for two weeks. But through that mission trip, I learned a lot that broke my heart. To understand that God was doing something new in Haiti that I wanted to be done in my hometown. People that were hungry to hear the word of the good news, much like we've seen through Brazil. 
God is at work, and I'm so thankful He includes us in it. There is a lady by the name of Eula Lowe. She doesn't as well know much. You don't know much about her, but to me, she understood to me what it meant to be a servant for the Lord. For many years, she would be the one that whenever a death occurred or a brand new baby would uh, arrive at a family's home, she would probably be the first, if not sent it by the deacon, one that would always get one of her angel flake biscuits that's been frozen. And they can fix it however they want, whenever they want. And even as I recall that memory that's etched in my heart, when my dad passed away, we got some of those Yulolo biscuits. And you're not talking about just a can of biscuits. You knew it was made from love from the first day that it was stretched out on that platter. You knew there was a heart behind it that went beyond what nourished our hearts, our souls. I had a great pastor, Jack Mullinetz, who recently received his heavenly promotion, and all of us were recounting the stories and investments that he made in our lives. I've had a college professor, Vera Johnson, who said to me at school, God will take care of this. And at that time, I did not know what she meant, but I do now because there was a lot of things going on in our world at that time. And she said the words that I trusted God and God will prevail. Much like the songs we heard this morning, how many times have we looked back over our lives and said God's hand's been all over that? We thank Him for. I thank the Lord for taking me to a foreign place called Fort Worth, Texas. I thought Haiti was a foreign place, but whenever I found out Fort Worth is even foreign at times, all the nationalities converge right around Fort Worth, and you could go in a store and you have no idea what anybody is saying. God was at work. God will use an individual that just said, Lord, help me out. He says, well, do you trust me? I said, yes. He said, do you really trust me? I said, yes. He says, then go with the children. I don't have anything with children. At that time, I realized that in order for us to pay me to pay for seminary, it was on my own. And that's where God enabled me to be a part of what many treasured. is a little children's center there at seminary. Families would come and drop off their children in order for them to go to school and work. Through the life of Connie Vollmer and others, I was introduced to this lady that would be my wife. Don't you think God has a sense of humor? She came to work at a children's center and Lord behold, there was a guy there and and he has no business in a children's center. And guess what? God united us. And it's been a treasure ever since. You don't understand a lot of things that God is doing until after he does it, do you? I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Even today, I am blessed because of the great children I have. Briley and Matthew are a blessing. So therefore, I want to be out there whenever he runs. I want to be there whenever he crosses the finish line. And I've told him many times, we'll be cheering for you in the car, but we'll wait for you to the finish line. Many of you parents are the same way. I've seen your pictures. You're there to support your kids. The faithfulness that you are illustrates how you're going to paint the picture of a faithful God we serve. Now our children, my children, know that I will disappoint them. When they hear this, they say, oh yeah, I know the time. But at the same time, in that disappointment, I want them to see God's grace in an amazing way. That God forgives 
I'm thankful for even coming into the state of Alabama, the treasure that I found in Dr. Rick Lance, a Jamie Baldwin, a Morgan Bailey, a Mike Goforth. Because their investments, even in my life today, teaches me that God is at work. Always at work. And He's included us in it. Being taught one thing and being shown is something greater. How can one person be surrounded by such a great people of faith and not embrace it? Because you see, many of us are surrounded by great teachers, people that love us, Sunday school teachers, individuals, and yet, what do we do with that? Then it's a next verse. Don't you love it that it just doesn't end there? Look with me, verse 13. Though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I attained the mercy because I did it ignorantly and in belief. Think about it. That verse we read a while ago said, God enables me. He gifted me. He put in me. A, he's done something in my life and from which I get to serve Him. But the next verse goes into Paul's recollection says, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man. How many times have you got to a place and somebody asks you to serve or do something and you say, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do that. That's impossible. I can never do that. Don't you love it whenever God says, watch this? He gets you into a place where you're doing that and then you realize, oh, now I see what the story is. This time of year brings across a, uh, an intentional thought when you know, we come to this passage. Think about the Easter story and you think of this. Already some of you that's already been in Sunday school for many years, your mind goes many different directions, doesn't it? Come back to verse 13, and I told Brother Mike this as we were going to see someone this week. That word blasphemer troubles me. We may not use it today in many terms, but for that time in that place, there's something that comes across my mind that says a blasphemer. You hear the story, and you always will, about the resurrection it's over here. You hear about the story of the resurrection and the cross and all that kind of stuff. But then there's a part of the story that we often forget about. This right here should break all of our hearts. Brother Charles, what are you talking about? It's just a, a handkerchief and some maybe some coins there. You know, for us to understand God's walk with us, we think about this individual that was called to be one of the disciples that followed Jesus. And he said yes. It wasn't the tax collector that God chose. Jesus chose to handle the funds of the disciples. He chose this man called Judas. Okay, some of you just now caught on. Oh yeah, I know this man Judas. Because over the ages, many of our minds have been heard about this man named Jesus, Judas, that blasphemed God. And he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. That etched on my heart, and it's still today. Every time we approach the Christmas, Christmas and Easter stories of how God uses some people to
to get across his greater mission in life. You see Judas. Judas was expecting, just like many of the others, he wanted a king. He wanted someone to take this place and do it over. They needed to follow Jesus. But yet Jesus says, go, 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 go get me a donkey. And he goes and gets this donkey and colt, and they come right in into the town, and everybody is singing praises to him, and they knew this is the time that Jesus is going to show out. Don't you love a story when everything gets all excited, and here it comes, here it comes. i got to sit on the edge of my seat because here it comes. Jesus is going to tell them all about it. He did. I can almost read between the lines and the... That's dangerous at times. Of what that conversation was after the triumphal entry. We speed up to the point of the Last Supper. And there Judas is taking apart what, what would be the last time he would be in the presence of Jesus. He would quickly leave that dinner gathering. And while Jesus went out to pray, like he always did, Judas was making a deal with the chief priests and coming to arrest Jesus with armed guards. There's a lot more to unpack on that. But we can sit here and point the finger as, Oh, Judas. Oh, Judas. And at times, we realize that we can have the choice of being a Paul or a Judas. There's probably one, I think I read one out of three million people that's named Judas today. Probably less than that. Because people don't choose the name Judas today for their children. Because of the reputation that Judas had. All to ease the conscience. But Paul, in this passage, says, God chose me even though I was a blasphemer, even though I was a persecutor. But Paul caught it, didn't he? He said yes to Jesus. It changed his life. And he was able to write to many Christians over the years to strengthen them in their service. As we resume our lives and as we go through this season of Easter, I'll ask you, do you know Jesus? Do you use the terminology of saying all the things that Christ is and this church thing's okay, but you know, I got to live my life. And you leave that here in this room of your relationship with Christ. You walk out this door being a Judas. It's okay to go through the motions and do everything that you think is right. But the heart of the matter is what Paul in, embraced. Is the fact that I cannot get anywhere beyond this point without the faithfulness, forgiveness of a holy God. I reflect back on how we began this message this morning. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful that God forgives? Because of His forgiveness, aren't you thankful that He didn't leave you because He's faithful? And the story continues, verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to, to do what? Say it. 
save, save sinners of whom I am chief. It's good standing right here. All the choirs over there. They're, they know the answers. The fact of it is, our world around us have missed the point that we are sinners that's been saved. And we've got a wonderful story to tell to the nations. If only Brother Mike would get there and tell everybody. Oftentimes, that's where the responsibility of telling the nations is, is on our pastor. I am thankful that God's enabled me to be a part of telling His good news in a world that needs to know the love of Jesus because I am a sinner and He saved me. Let's brag a moment, okay? Brother Charles, we don't brag in church. No, no, no. Let's, seriously, let's brag this morning. How many of you, without a question or a doubt, I am a saved sinner? Look at the hands all around you. There's been a time in these individuals' lives that they said, yes, I can't fix everything that's wrong with me. I need a Savior. And from which they said yes to Jesus because... Somewhere, someone somewhere told them that they are loved by Jesus. It could be a Sunday school teacher. It could be a deacon. It could be a lady that makes biscuits from some odd, strange reasons. It could be any host of people. But because someone said, I need to tell you about someone that loves you more than I do. And they introduce you to the name of Jesus. For humor say, aren't you thankful they didn't tell you about Judas? Well, Judas loves you. He'll follow you. He'll follow you up until the time it gets very, very challenging. Then he'll leave you. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hands because there's a lot of them in this room. How many of you have got to a critical point in your life and the ones that you thought were the closest to you that would stand with you weren't there. In a world that we are living in today, a lot of people are at that point. They don't know which way to turn. They'll tell you that you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to take that approach. I'm so thankful that God's enabled us into the ministry to say, Jesus loves you. But you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know what all you're going through. All I know is that Jesus, knowing everything you're going through, loves you. He's faithful. He'll forgive. And from which... What brings greater peace and resolution a day of trouble than to know that Jesus loves you, He forgives you, and He's faithful to the bitter end. You see, the way I see as ministry is each of us have an opportunity to be God's vessels, His hands and feet into a lost world. We may not understand and we don't need to know. But we can no longer assume that the person sitting next to you has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can't assume that. Well, they've been teaching all these years. They've been a deacon. They've been a servant. They've been all this. One of the greatest things I saw God to illustrate in my life is whenever we were going, teaching people how to share their faith, and we had an 80-year-old lady that came forward, and she says, I'm so embarrassed. And she sat there, and she said, I'm just so embarrassed. I mean, this lady was in everything the church did. 
but she was still very embarrassed. She knew it was something weighty on her heart. And the weight was lifted when she knew she had never made a decision to follow Jesus. How can that be? She's been serving. She's been a part of the church numerous years. How can that be that she had no relationship with Jesus Christ? Judas? How many miracles did Judas see? How many people, how many times had he heard Jesus share the good news with so many people and lives were changed? How many miracles did Judas see and still at the very end said, I can't handle it. I don't want any part of Jesus. And he abandoned it. Miss Norma in that room said yes to Jesus. And it was like all the things that she did in the church did not matter anymore. Because this was the motivation spirit. She had to do it. And much like Brother Sammy Gilbert said the other way is, he said, whenever you get to the point that you understand that I get to do this, it brings a greater joy. For Miss Norma, she was involved in everything afterwards, but with more passion and more zeal because of the fact she thanked God for loving her so much that she got to do all that she did because Jesus enabled her. This morning's message is just that. How are you using, how are you being a vessel? How can you celebrate what God is doing in your life? The first thing off is this. We use the word sinner, 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 sinner. And to a lost person, that may not mean a thing, but let me basically pull it back down. If you know that you do wrong things, Scripture calls you a sinner. In this room, just a while ago, many people raised their hands because of the fact they knew there was a point in their life that they understood that they did things wrong. Now, they probably tell you even today they'll do some things wrong. But at the same time, they have greater victory because of the fact they know Jesus loves them. That if their life was taken, ended right now, they knew there was a place prepared for them in heaven. Heaven's not my goal. My goal is being all I can be while I'm here because He's preparing a place there for me. To be in the presence of a loving Father is amazing. But to be able to be able to be a part of what He wants to do across the world is amazing. Think about your life. Whether you're a teacher, a maintenance worker, a, a, in, a retired individual, whatever the case is, thank God that He has enabled you, whatever that is, to be a vessel for Him to tell people Jesus loves them. I can thank a lot of people for investing in my life, but one of the things I'm not going to do is think none of them were valuable to God. He used all of them in unique ways in order to grab a heart of a person and say, I love you and I want you to serve me. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. Let's bow together. Without us thinking about the person that's sitting next to you, think about your own life. How has God enabled you to be a part of His ministry? Some of you are already saying, well, I'm a blasphemer. I've done some things. God's never going to use me. I've done some things wrong, and I just can't get over that. Guess what? God says, I'll send my son to the cross in order to take what you've done and pay the penalty of that sin. No, I can't get him to do that. It's not that he had to do it. 
He wanted to do it because we needed a Savior. In this very moment, you can have a Savior too. You can have someone that will forgive you, even knowing all that you've gone through. Thank Him for it. Call out to Him. We'll help you walk the rest of the way to understand what that means. You can do that this morning. Many in this room have raised their hands and said that you invited Jesus Christ into your life because He made a difference of forgiveness. Now this passage of Scripture comes back to you to say you're part of the ministry. You're part of what made Sardis Baptist Church an effective growing mission house for the Lord is because He uses all of us in our own unique ways to portray His goodness. Maybe you need to rekindle that this morning and say, Lord, I understand you've called me to this profession. Would you make it more than just a job I go to and make it be a, a mission place where I can share your name? Let's do that. Let's do that. Dear Father, in this room, we thank you for your presence in this place today. We, we know that you are here because we've gathered together to worship you. And now, Lord, we know that you're looking at our hearts and our lives. And, and Lord, we, we just thank you for loving us that much that you gave your son. As we enter into this Easter season, let us recall once again the price that was paid. But most of all, let us understand that we made excuses before. And the time for excuses is over because I count it a joy to serve and follow you who has enabled me. Lord, guide us into this time of decision. Make all those things become light to you as we enter into this time this morning. As people come, Lord, move in our hearts. In your name we pray. Let's stand together as we had this time of decision. Come talk to me, Brother Pearson. We're here for you. Don't leave this place without that knowledge of who he is today. As we stand and sing, will you come? Think about these words. You sing them. Aren't you thankful? He did it. you say praise God to that amen go tell somebody go tell them they need to hear from someone that loves Jesus more today than ever before and we get to do that we don't have to do it we get to do it. 
I'm thankful that you're here. I'm glad that no one knew that I was preaching and you didn't come. I'm glad you came. That's why we keep things secret before you get here, that you find out after you get here. Now, thank you for your presence today. Guess I will love to meet you. I'll be over here in this lobby. We have a gift for you as well, or just fill out that Connect card and leave it on the pew. We are excited. Look forward to the opportunities. I think Rex and Cheryl may set up an autograph table over here, but hey, we, we thank them. We had, Pearson and I had more fun watching that than what we saw put on screen. They'll tell you, it's a lot of fun. So if you'd like to be the next individuals, come see Brother Pearson before you leave today. He'll get you signed up. And talk to Rex and Cheryl. They'll tell you it's a lot of fun. Amen? Yeah, okay. Brother Chris is going to come and lead us in a time of prayer as we are close out this morning. Let's pray. Father, it has been good to be in your house this morning with Brother Charles' words, Father. And we thank you for being in a place where we can worship uh, without fear, God. We thank you for Brother Mike and the ministry that he has here for so long and the joy that he has with his baptism of his granddaughter today. But we thank you also for Brother Pearson and Brother Charles and Brother Shannon and the way they lead this church and step in and fill those voids. God, thank you for them. Bless them. Be with them and encourage them. God, as we've heard this morning about the, 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 those of our faith that have encouraged I know that all of us have been struck by people in our lives and our past. And we thank you for those that have gone on and are with you today. God, help us to reach out to those that are still here and give them a thank you. Uh, and God, we just thank you for the heart of service that this church has and those around. Pray that you'd be with us too, God, as we go forward, that we will be your hands and feet. God, you made us as, as earthen vessels, jars of clay. And God, we're unworthy, but thankfully we don't have to live in that unworthiness. You have made us worthy. You have made us saints. You lift us up that we might be what you want us to be to those around us. As we get close to Easter, we ask that you would just encourage us, to encourage those around us with what the joy of this season means, God, in the heartache of the cross, but the joy of the resurrection. And we thank you that we live in those days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.